Hey guys, this is Arlequin, and tonight I'm going to be talking about um, some of the routines we're going to be following as we go about having independent reading during our ELA class this year. When you think about independent reading, one of the first things you probably think about is why do people actually read? There's a lot of different types of readers in this world, and there are people who hate reading, and there are people who love reading, and then there are those in the middle who kind of fall in between. They don't love it, they don't hate it, or they only like it some of the times. In general, people do read for enjoyment. Um, sometimes, depending on what you're reading, you might be reading to learn about a topic. And one of the things that people who love to read are often reading for is because they like to put themselves in someone else's shoes. When you're reading a fictional book, you get to become that character and to live a life and an adventure that might be very different from your own. I know personally that's how I feel when I'm reading some of my favorite books like Harry Potter or The Hunger Games. Alright, so during sixth grade we are going to have an independent reading goal of finishing two books a month. Now, you might remember from fifth grade that we're also going to have a genre of the month, and one of your book choices will have to fit the school-wide genre of the month. However, your second book choice for that month can be from any genre. In general, for independent reading, you are choosing what books you're going to read. They can be basically anything that you're interested in. However, the books you choose should be appropriate to your grade level or your individual reading level, which is going to match up with your Lexile level, which we are going to get from our iReady assessments. And we'll talk more about Lexile levels later. Now, you want to make sure that you are always carrying your book with you. So bring your book with you every day, even though we might not have independent reading in class every day. You always want to have that book with you. And you want to make sure that you can read whenever you can. When you're done with a classwork assignment, that could be an independent menu activity. Um, so you're done with your work, you put it in the inbox, and you spend the rest of class time with your independent reading book. You could do independent reading when a teacher is absent, and you want to make sure that you're reading every night at home. That's going to be our standing ELA homework assignment. We will have additional homework besides independent reading, but independent reading has to be done every single night. Now what does independent reading time look like? Well, if, when we're reading in class, it should be silent. Your eyes should be glued to your book, not literally. There should be nothing else on your desk except your independent reading book and post-it notes. And choosing new books from the classroom library should be done quietly. This is not a place to stand and talk to your friends. The only other thing that you would possibly be doing during independent reading time would be if you had finished a book and you were working on a book report. So it's really three things during independent reading time. Reading, choosing new books, working on book reports. Now our classroom library is full of a lot of books and there are some rules that have to be put into place in order to keep that classroom library neat, organized, and make sure it doesn't get run down. You want to always sign your book out on the class sign out sheet. Now books from home or any other library do not need to be signed out. It's only if you're borrowing a book from the classroom library. And you want to make sure that you always return your book to, to me before you choose a new one. You also want to make sure that you only take out one book at a time. I know that there's a lot of books that are probably going to interest you. You might have a difficult time choosing. Um, especially if you're an avid reader. However, we do have to limit it to one because there are a lot of students in my class and we want to make sure that there are as many book choices available for you as possible. So we don't really want to get in the habit of hoarding books at home. If you have three books taken out and you're only reading one of them at the time, then those two other books are just sitting there in your house not doing anybody any good. We want to keep the library neat and organized. So when you return a book, you want to make sure that you place it back in the correct place. So the book should be labeled with the genre, and you want to make sure that you find the correct shelf or bin. 
Now, if the book isn't labeled, then give it to Miss A, me. Or, if you can't find the correct bin or shelf, you also want to make sure you give it to me. Don't just put the book back anywhere, because we don't want to find the Captain Underpants books over with the vampire fiction, because anyone who's looking for a vampire book is probably not looking for Captain Underpants. Remember, independent reading time should be fun. If a book you're reading is torturing you, choose something else. There are way too many for you to have to suffer with one that you hate. Now, let's talk a little bit about choosing a just right book. I want you to think about how you decide what movie to see. There are a lot of different ways to choose a movie. Some people just pick something based on the movie trailer. They see a really interesting movie trailer, it catches their interest, and they decide to see the movie. Some people use recommendations from their friends. Some people read movie reviews. Some people only go to movies that are based on things they already know, like comic books or books or TV shows that are turned into movies. Choosing a book is really very similar to choosing a movie that you want to see. One of the first things you want to do is look at the cover and the title. I know a lot of people say, oh, don't judge a book by its cover, but I mean, in a way, you're going to look at the cover first and form some kind of an opinion. Now, obviously, you don't want to assume that a book is boring just because the cover doesn't look that great. However, if you see that the cover has a cowboy and a horse in the front and you absolutely hate Western books, it might not, that, that would be the first clue that that might not be the best choice for you. When you look at the cover, notice things that stand out to you, does it look interesting, what kind of predictions about the book can you make. Next, I would flip through the book and look at the font size, how long it is, and text features. Um, things like, is it a comic book, is it an illustrated novel, is the font really small, how long are the chapters, am I comfortable with these features of the book? Is the size of the font and the length similar to other books that I read? The smaller the font, usually the more difficult the book. Check for any unique text features. So if you open it up and you see that it's written in comic book form, you're going to have to read that book differently than you would a regular novel. Now, are the features going to help my understanding of the book? Are there pictures? Is it just text? Is this a just right book for me, just based on the way that it's structured? Read the blurb. Blurb is often on the back of the book if it's, a if it's a paperback. If it's a hardcover, then it's on the inside front cover. What information am I getting from the blurb that I didn't get from the front cover? You're usually going to get a synopsis of the plot. And is there anything that interests me about the blurb? Usually those are going to be the quick and easy ways to first see if this is even a book you want to attempt to read. Finally, you want to check the book's reading level or use the five-finger test. So you want to look at the level of the book. Our classroom library books should have levels on them. Many of them have the Lexile level of the book already listed on it. Um, you'll be getting your Lexile levels in class tomorrow. Um, most of the books also have a color-coded sticker. And some of them, but not all, have a guided reading level. I know that's something that you guys used in elementary school. Now that we're in middle school, we're going to be switching to the Lexile leveling system. Now, if the book isn't leveled or you're unsure if the level really is right for you, pick a random page and see if there are five words that you don't know on it. That's called the five-finger test. What you do as you're reading that page is you hold up fingers whenever you get to a vocabulary word that you don't know. So when you are reading and you find one word you don't know, you hold up one finger. Two fingers for the second word you don't know, and so on. If you have no fingers, that might be a sign the book is too easy. One finger is easy. Two fingers is, might be the perfect choice. Three fingers, you might need help, but you could give it a try, especially if it's a book you're really interested in. Four fingers means the book is tough to read, and you're going to want to ask an adult to read it with you. And five fingers means that it's probably too difficult to read. Again, you can ask an adult to read it with you or try a different book. Now, if you're holding up five or four fingers, does that mean that you can't read the book? No. You can always read any book you want. This is just a way to see if the book might be too difficult. And if you've ever read a book that's too hard for you, 
you know that it does take some of the enjoyment out of it, and I want to remind you that independent reading time is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be torture. You want to build up to those more difficult books and not overstrain yourself. It would be like if you just learned how to ride a bike and you decided that you were going to do a flip, two flips in the air. Even though it's something you're not ready for, you're probably going to end up getting hurt and you'll never want to go bike riding again. And we don't want that to happen with reading. We want to become lifelong lovers of reading. Alright, so one of the things that I want you guys to start to realize is that everything that you do in this class goes into the way your ELA grade gets formulated. And independent reading is no exception. Independent reading is not a free time, it's not a waste of time, it's not a time to do nothing. During independent reading time, I will be meeting with students and observing your reading, and you will get a grade for the marking period based on how well you are conducting independent reading. And so here we have the rubric that I'll be using to grade you. This rubric is going to be shared with you on Edmodo, so you can refer to it at any time. To get a level four for independent reading, you are reading the whole time with the exception of choosing books and working on book reports. That counts in this category as reading the whole time. You stay in one reading spot the whole time, so you're not getting up and constantly wandering around the room looking for books, quote unquote. You read quietly and you respect others, so you're not making faces at your friend across the room or passing notes or being silly. You're totally absorbed by the book. I can completely tell after 12, thir now 13 years of teaching when somebody's into the book they're reading and when somebody's faking it. Again, you should be choosing books that you like, and so you should want to use this time to read it. You're using the reading strategies that good readers use, so you're making predictions, you're asking questions. If you don't understand what you're reading, you're stopping and you're rereading. And you have a reading plan and you choose your books carefully. I can see sometimes students go over to the library and they just grab a random book off the shelf and sit down. That's usually the sign to me that that person doesn't really like reading and they're not really putting effort in, which I don't approve of. Now, Every year I have students ask me how much they should be reading each night. As a general guideline, I'm going to put on the homework board that you should be reading for about 45 minutes. Of course, more reading than 45 minutes is better. Anything more is going to be better. But to say how much reading actually takes place in a 45-minute period is not really a simple question. And it has to do with your reading pace. Now, what affects a person's reading speed is their book choice, if they've chosen fiction or nonfiction, their interests, the reading level of the book, um, I'm sorry, their reading level, and then the book level, your reading stamina, and that has to do with how long you're able to sit in one place and read quietly without getting antsy, and then there are other outside forces. So, if you're at home with a screaming baby, um, and it's distracting you from reading, that's going to affect how much you're able to read. Alright, your next question is, how do you know what your reading pace is? Now one goal every reader should have is to increase their reading stamina. And you basically want to figure out how long you can read for without getting tired or bored. Now, As the year goes on, your goal should be that your reading stamina should increase. So for example, let's say in September it takes me 15 minutes to read a two-page article. Um, to, in order to make growth or to make progress and have growth, by June I wanted to be able to read that same article in just 10 minutes. So there's now a five-minute difference. I'm reading faster by the end of the year. That's one way that you can track your growth as a reader, seeing that you're getting a little bit better at your reading rate, being able to read faster to sustain reading for longer periods of time. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what is our reading pace as of right now in September. So I want you to take any independent reading book, doesn't matter what it is, just it could be what you chose in class or something you have in your house, and I want you to time yourself for 15 minutes. So you're going to start at a certain page number, uh, it could be the first page of the book. If it's a book that you're in the middle of, it could be the middle. You're going to write down what your starting page number is. You're going to read for 15 minutes. And then at the end of the 15 minutes, you're going to write down what your ending page number is. 
So now you know your reading pace for just 15 minutes of time. Now since each night for independent reading we're going to be reading for half an hour, you're going to take your total number of pages from 15 minutes and you're going to figure out what that would be if you read for half an hour. So obviously 15 minutes into half an hour is doubled. So you're just going to very simply take the total number of pages from 15 minutes multiplied by 2. And that is approximately how much you should be reading each night during independent reading time. And as the school year goes on, you're going to want to check to make sure that that pace is getting a little bit quicker. Once you have your reading pace figured out, you're going to click on the assignment link on Edmodo. It's going to take you to this Google form right here. And this is where you're going to submit your reading rate to me. So you're going to enter your name. You're going to click on your class. You're going to give me the title of the book your starting page, your ending page, the total pages you read, and then how much you figured out you'd be able to read in half an hour, and you're going to press submit. If you do not press submit, then I won't get your response, and I won't be able to keep track of your reading rate or your growth.